explain the energy transfers in these three situations. Pushing a heavy box across a floor, a battery powered motor lifting a weight, and a nuclear power station generating electricity. Let's jump in with the first example, pushing a heavy box across a floor. So for each of these examples, uh, we're going to get some wasted energy. So I'm just going to put a little asterisk here and that's going to refer to wasted energy. And that's energy which is not useful. Okay, so let's start off here. We're going to push this box across the floor. Uh, we're going to use energy transfer diagrams called Sankey diagrams to do this. So we start off with chemical energy or chemical potential energy in the person's muscles. So I'll just label it as chemical energy. Potential means stored, so we can say chemical potential energy uh, if we want it to be more detailed. Okay, the human body is only about 20% efficient, so we're going to get a lot of wasted thermal energy as we try to convert that chemical energy into kinetic energy. So at this point here, we've got uh, a push force, and that push force is doing work, transferring energy. Push force does work. So there's that physics phrase, doing work, transferring energy. Remember forces, when they move something through a distance in the same direction as the force, they do work, they transfer energy. In this case, chemical energy into kinetic energy. I'm going to just put Ke for kinetic energy and we get some wasted thermal energy in our muscles because we're using a lot of energy to keep ourselves alive. Uh, okay, so we're now pushing the box across the floor. Now, that kinetic energy, uh, if we just stop pushing, the box will stop. And the reason it stops is because of friction. So here, we've got friction between the box and the floor. Friction does work. It's doing work transferring energy and most of that kinetic energy will be transferred into thermal energy thermal energy we've made the uh, we've heated up the bottom of the box and the floor and friction has converted the kinetic energy into thermal sometimes called internal internal energy okay so let's move on now to the battery powered motor that's lifting a weight. Okay, so we start off again with chemical energy in the battery. Or chemical potential energy. And that is then converted into electrical energy. Now we do lose some thermal energy in the wire in the battery, sorry. Um, and the connections which have resistance. So we need to put uh, a little asterisk here. Asterisk, right, there we go. And now we've got electrical energy. So that's a transfer from chemical to electrical in the wires. Let's put chemical energy in the battery. Now we've got electrical energy in the in the wires and that's going to be transferred into kinetic energy in the motor and this is called electrical working electrical working it's similar to a force doing work transferring energy but it's applied to electrical situations. So we call it electrical working. And we do lose uh, some more thermal energy in that process due to friction in the bearings. And we heat up the surroundings a little bit there. Uh, so now we have kinetic energy and that motor is lifting up, turning and lifting up that weight. Okay, so 
we're now converting that kinetic energy via the pulley to gravitational potential energy. We're going to lose a little bit of thermal energy due to friction. That's up there again. And now we have gravitational potential energy, GPE. And uh, motors are about sort of 60 70 percent efficient most of the time that's when they're converting the electrical energy into kinetic energy okay and there's our gravitational potential energy let's move on to the nuclear power station so our first type of energy of course is nuclear energy in the nuclear fuel in the uranium 238 nuclear energy and a process called fission transfers that nuclear energy into thermal energy now we we get some wasted thermal energy that leaks to the surroundings so again it's wasted uh, but we get a lot of heat energy that's put into uh, heating the water Okay, so we can call that thermal energy, energy in the water. Now that then boils to create steam. So we've got boiling, I should put here fission, that's the process to start with. And that boiling process means the steam moves very quickly, we create kinetic energy we will lose some of course actually just need to rewind that a bit okay so we've got kinetic we've got some lost thermal energy here again uh, we've got some kinetic energy that lost thermal energy is due to friction in the uh, system and so we have kinetic energy and that kinetic energy is in the steam, in the turbine, as it drives the turbines, and in the generator. Okay, let's just continue there. And finally, that generator converts that kinetic energy to electrical energy. Electrical energy. In the wires, we lose some thermal energy again due to the uh, friction in the generator and also resistance in the wires and nuclear power stations are about 33 percent efficient uh, generally so those are three energy transfer examples uh, using sand key diagrams or thermal or energy transfer diagrams to help us see the energy transfers